So today we're just going to do a really nice, simple hip opening, stretchy flow. Um, if you've got a mat, that's great, grab it. If you don't have a mat, then that's fine too. You just need a little bit of space to be able to move. If you do have really, really tight hips, then it might be nice to grab um, a pillow or a block just to elevate the hips just when we start sitting down. But if you don't, then um, that's absolutely fine. So just start um, in a comfortable seated position. So if you do have a block or a pillow here, then just place it just under the seat bones and either take a nice easy pose with one foot in front of the other, maybe take half lotus or cross the legs, or if there are any problems with the knees, then just maybe taking the knees just round to the side. We're just going to take a couple of moments just to settle in and then just shut out the outdoor again. So just take the hands to the knees, palms down or palms up, just close the eyes just for a few moments. And then just start to bring the attention to the breath. We're just going to start by breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the nose, just taking a moment just to give the body a quick scan, just noticing any feelings in the body. Maybe any tightness or tension. And just acknowledging it and just moving on, not attaching any feelings. Noticing if the jaw is tense and the shoulders are tense and then just trying to relax. So sitting up nice and tall. Just nice natural breaths in through the nose. And out through the nose. We're just taking these next 10 minutes or so. Just for ourselves. So it doesn't matter what's going on around you. Just concentrating on what's going on inside you. Just taking a few more rounds of breath here. And then when you're ready, just gently blinking the eyes open. Starting off by bringing the soles of the feet together. So getting rid of that cushion or that block if you've got one. Bring the soles of the feet together, clasp the hands and just take it round the toes. Gently shuffling the body forward. So trying to get the heels as close to the body as we can. Just really starting to open up the hips. So just taking a little bit of movement there in the knees if that feels good. And then maybe taking the elbows and the forearms to the insides of the calves, just gently pressing them down. So we're really opening out into this hip. Taking a few nice deep breaths here. Again, noticing if the shoulders are tense and just trying to relax them down. And then release. We're going to come into a seated variation of our pigeon pose here. I'm just going to come to the side so just so you can see. So bending up both arms, both legs, arms, keeping the arms and straight behind you. So we're going to start with the left leg. So keeping the right leg exactly where it is, we're going to pick the left leg up, just fold it over the right. So keeping the left foot nice and active, we're just going to again pick that seat up, just move it a little bit closer. So you should be feeling a stretch in the outer left glute, to that outer left hip. If that's too much for you too close, then just come in a little bit further away. Again, trying to relax the shoulders, keeping this left foot nice and active. So the toes pointing up to the ceiling. It's sometimes nice just to take a little bit of movement just from side to side, just really finding that spot that feels good. And trying to get that calf, that ankle as close to this chest as possible, just remembering not to force and not to push anything. This is just a nice gentle walk, a nice gentle stretch. This is really nice, I love to do this in the morning, but also if you've had a day when you've been sitting down a lot, then it can be really nice to do, just to release some of those hip tensions as well. So just release there, switching over. To the other side, so bringing the right leg up this time, folding it over the left again, keeping that right foot up to the ceiling, and then just altering 
that seat just a little bit. And then just breathing in, maybe taking that movement if it feels good. Also noticing it can feel completely different on this side than the other side. It might feel a little bit easier, and it might feel a little bit harder, it might not, that's fine too. Again, just breathing into this stretch. Taking one more breath here. And releasing, just shaking it out. Next we're going to come down into our frog pose. So, bringing the knees out nice and wide. We're taking the legs, lower legs, just back from the knees. We're just going to take them as wide apart as is comfortable and then just pressing back gently. And come down onto the side, just to show you. So legs straight down, pressing back. Try not to let these legs come in. Try not to let them come out too far. And then just press the bottom back towards the floor. Maybe coming down on to the forearms if that's comfortable. If that's too much, then just bringing the knees just a little bit closer together, still pressing back. If you're staying in this pose for a while, it can start to get a little bit much on the hips. But if you can, just bear with it. Just keep pressing those hips back and breathing into the hips. I won't stay here too long because it can be a little bit intense, but this is just a really good way of releasing the lower back as well as the hips. So we're just going to stay here. Just two more breaths. Exhale, slowly coming up onto the hands from the forearms, slowly closing those hips in. Next, we're just going to make our way into our low lunge. So start off from the knees, so we're just going to take the right foot forward just to start with. What we don't want is the knee to overshoot the ankle, so don't press it forwards too much. So we're really starting to open out this left hip. Take the hands up, relax the shoulders. So any lunge is really good for the hips. So taking a low lunge, if that's good, or maybe you can tuck the toes in the left foot and lifting that back knee if that works for you. So coming into more of a high lunge, whatever works for you here. Taking two more breaths. Making sure the shoulders are relaxed. And then just floating the hands down, taking the right knee back. This time I'm going to take the left foot forwards, again reaching up, relaxing the shoulders. Again, so we really get into both hips, just try and make sure both hips are forwards. What you don't have to do is sink into this hip. So what we don't want to do is collapse into this hip and really hyperextend the hip. Sometimes it's a little bit better just to bring that knee just a little bit further forwards. Really tuck the tailbone under and you can feel a stretch on the hip. We don't want the back to be hyperextending, the knee to be overshooting. So just finding that position that works. Put your body again gently opening in to both hips. Take one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. So we're going to come into our reclined hero pose now. So if it's available, just sitting down onto the knees, just taking the seat bones down between the feet. So a couple of options here. So staying here if that's enough. If you can't take it any further, if that's uncomfortable, then staying here. Maybe again placing a cushion under the bottom. But if it's available, just starting to walk the hands backwards. Maybe taking the head back. Maybe coming down onto the elbows and the forearms. And then maybe coming all the way down onto the floor. So this is really stretching into the front of the quads, into the front of the hips. Again, taking whatever variation works for you. Trying to relax the shoulders 
and the neck. Again, keeping the pelvis tucked under, so we're really working into the hips. And then breathing. Again, you're not forcing any movement. So if it doesn't feel right for you in this position, then coming out, there's absolutely no point in using our ego if it's just going to detriment and hurt our body. If this is enough of a stretch for you, then staying here is absolutely fine. So we're just going to take one more breath here. And then release coming up. So this time coming in to a wide forward fold in a seated position. So bringing their legs out wide, keeping the toes pointing up. In this position, we want to keep the knees pointing up towards the ceiling. We want to keep pressing back. So imagine that you're rolling outwards with the thighs. We're going to start to walk the hands forward into a wide-legged forward fold. And what we don't want is for the legs to roll in. If we can fold into a fold and the knees roll in, the feet roll in, then we've taken the activation out of the knees. It's much more beneficial for you to stay here and just take it this far forwards, feel a nice stretch in the hips, then trying to come down here and rolling in. So take an inhale, really lengthen through the spine, through the chest, and as you exhale, you're just going to fold forward and gently start to walk the hands forward. If we get here and that's enough, then stay here. That's absolutely fine. If we can come down onto the forearms, then that's an option too. If we can extend all the way out to the front, then take whatever option you need. You're going to really think about rolling outwards with the hips and finding that stretch that works for you. So just taking two more breaths again, just altering wherever you need to finding that place for you. Take one last breath and then coming up to seated. We're just going to take one more and that's just going to be our pigeon pose. So coming over on to the tabletop position onto the hands and knees just to start with. So we're going to start off on the right hand side. So you're going to bring the right foot towards the left wrist. You're going to bring the right knee towards the right wrist. Just finding that space that's right for you. So if you can't take the foot this far forwards, then maybe bringing the heel a little bit closer into the body. Trying to keep the hips as square as you can. So maybe placing an object underneath that right glute if it doesn't hit the floor. What we don't want is for the hips to come out of alignment at this point, putting pressure onto the lower back. So maybe just staying here, if you notice, from a side angle, my glutes very slightly off the floor. If I put something underneath there, then my hips are going to stay in a nice angle instead of coming down into this position. Maybe coming down onto the forearms if that's available. If the hips are very open, then maybe taking the hands straight out. Again, it's your body. So just working with how your body needs to work. So we're just going to take two more breaths here. And then come back into the hands if you are on the forearms. Take that right leg back. Just put a couple of circles into that right leg, that right knee, just to get rid of any kinks and clicks. Sometimes you might feel pins and needles come into the leg. Just get rid of that. I'm going to do the same on the left side. So again, bringing that left foot forward, finding that position for your pigeon pose, whatever works for you. Again, maybe putting a cushion or a block underneath the left glute and relaxing the upper body, the shoulders, trying not to tense up. So really relaxing the shoulder blades down. Again, it might feel completely different on this side than it did on the other side. So just breathing into that space into the hips. Again, if that's too much, then coming out of the pose very slightly, or if you want more, maybe walking the hands forwards and taking the forehead down to the mat. Again, whatever works for you. So we take two more breaths here. And release. 
And then just coming down onto the mat, just bringing the knees into the chest, giving yourself a hug, rocking from side to side. So just closing the hips off. And then just before you go on with your day, taking a really short shavasana, if that serves you, just taking the legs straight out, hands by the sides with the palms facing up and just relaxing the body. Close the eyes off and just bring the attention back to the breath that we started with. Just slowing everything down. Just noticing if any thoughts come into the head again and just completely releasing and relaxing. Taking as much time as you need to hear before you get on with your day. When you're ready to come out, gently moving the fingers and toes to start, and rolling over onto the right hand side, bringing the knees into the chest, just taking as much time as you need in your Shavasana, and just come up into a seated position. Just notice any different feelings in the body from when we started the practice. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, then please leave me a comment. Please let me know. Again, if there's anything else that you'd like to see, then please do let me know. Thank you. Namaste.